Hey guys, he's very uh, tired right now, so he'll probably just chill like this. But if he starts moving about, we'll switch up our little setup here. But uh, if you watched the vlog earlier, number 134, we introduced Hank, well, really we introduced Hank in 133. What, which one are we on? Are we on 34 or 135? Henry? Yeah. You just said Hank. Oh, Henry. <laughs> which one are we on? 134. I think so. Anyways, we, we introduced him quickly on one of them, and then the one that we just released this morning. We kind of gave a bigger introduction, I guess. And uh, as promised in that video, we said we would do a live, and we kind of tell the story of how we came to decide to get him and what went into that. And uh, I guess also we could talk about like our plans in training him, what we uh, will do for whatever different behavioral issues, although there doesn't seem to be any right now. I don't know, but people will be curious, so we'll let you know uh, about those things. But first of all, I don't really want to turn him exactly, but his face looks super adorable right now. <laughs> but he was out all day, so he's a little bushed. But anyways. Cindy's F says, very well behaved and loads of energy. Yeah, so far he's pretty decently behaved, except for he loves trying to play with the cats. Yeah. So we put the cats outside for now. Um, but so what we're doing is we're just kind of, so he realizes that instead of playing with them, he can play with well, Chena's not here right now, but, no, us. but he can play with us or Chena instead of going after them. But I think it's tempting for him to try to play with them because, well, First thank you. Hans says, get Henry a snack for me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, it's tempting for him to play with them because he... Oh, yeah, because they're, they're, they play with each other. So then he goes in with it, but they don't want to play with them. They're, they're getting scared of them, I think. They're like just avoiding them all together. Which well, is... Penny went on a walk with us. She was oh yeah, she did. Yeah. Which was hilarious because she was unsure. So we took the Fruit Loop trail and we we're ahead of her. And then we just hear like this meowing, which was kind of strange. I thought maybe it was a, just a random cat or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then we just see Penny coming down the trail. And then uh, she's coming. She knows he's there. So she wasn't scared of him or anything then. And then we like get, I don't know. 100 feet away from her or something like that and then she starts booking it like running down the trail meowing until she gets up to Henry and then she starts walking again mm -hmm. lets Henry stay ahead of instead of stay ahead of her yeah um somebody asked what his breed is oh yeah I, that's one of the things that we forgot to mention mm -hmm. so in the vlogs I, I always try to mention or I just, you know, anticipate questions coming. I try to preemptively answer the questions, but somehow we missed, like, one of the most obvious questions we would get. Yeah. I wish we would have wrote down some of the questions that were common, but he is a golden shepherd. So he's a golden retriever, retriever mixed with a German shepherd. Uh, and he could have some other collie or something in him, too. Potentially, yeah. Um, and so, someone asked how old he is. He's... he's I would say 11 weeks now. About 11 weeks. Yeah. yeah, so when we picked him up, it was 10 weeks, and we've had him for five days now, right? We got him on Friday. And it's what day today? Thursday. Okay, so we've had him for six days. Yeah. Six days now, so. Yeah. Uh, almost 11 weeks, I guess. And he was a single pup out of his litter, so... Would you call that a litter? <laughs> like, I don't know if the other ones didn't make it or what happened, but... I guess they didn't say. No, they didn't say. But he was only one, so no brothers or sisters. He doesn't have, uh... He didn't have, for the first while, any puppies to play with, but there was other animals and other uh, dogs as well. Adult dogs. Uh, or at least one, anyway. Um, so there's that. But, so, we didn't actually plan on getting him. Or we didn't plan on getting any dog, really. We wanted to get another dog eventually. Yeah, not that we wouldn't get a dog, we just didn't know that we were going to get one so soon. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of people are unaware that Hank passed away. He must have skipped a few vlogs. Mm -hmm. um, 
Mm-hmm. On May 1st. Yeah, May 1st he died from uh, cardiac issues. Had a heart attack from... Uh, from? Like, I don't know if excitement or whatever. We knew that he had issues. He was on medication. He had meds and he had uh, like a treatment plan, if you will. Yeah. But it didn't really... Like, I wish our vet would have been a little more honest with us and telling us, like, because they gave us, like, a year timeline. Well, no, she said his prognosis was very poor, but she didn't really have a specific time. That's true. Right, like, and she couldn't. She just, she did the best that she could, I think. Yeah. Right. Um, but, uh... Ashley, thank you, Ashley. Oh, thanks. Ashley Lane. Uh, anyway... So he passed away however many months ago that is now. And then uh, <clears throat> we still have Shadow. She's just chilling over there. And we uh, off and on will watch China. But uh, anyways, as time went on, we kind of just would see dogs that were available, like say on Facebook or whatever. Someone needed to rehome their dog just through friends and stuff. Um, how, rescues were posting. Yeah, rescues were right. posting. Stuff like that. And there was no dogs that... Well, we weren't really there looking. There were lots, but none that really stood out to us. Right. Yeah. And we weren't really, mm-hmm. like, searching. Like, hey, let's get a dog. But anyway, eventually, Henry, who was named... What was his name? Horace? Horace. So they named him <laughs> Horace. Uh, so Horace became available as a... Uh, farm dog or whatever, as a mm-hmm. farm litter or whatever, pup. And so, did you search for him on purpose? Not really. Not really. No, I was on the computer and I just saw him. So, and yeah. I anyway. called you, you were in the shop, and I called you. I was like, found him. <laughs> You're right, right. Then I yeah. came in. So, Actually, what happened during that day, we had Steve the Scrapper come over, pick up all my scrap steel, which you'll see in one of the vlogs. Uh, he got, comes and picks up the steel, and uh, we put him some poles in... Oh, no, that was another day, wasn't it? I don't know what else we did that day. Oh, uh, local Linda came she over. Came over. Yeah. She picked up the zombie head. I see that's not a fan favorite, the zombie head. I personally like it. Luckily, she liked it. I think it's more so her kids liked it. But Thank you, Gail. She says, sorry about Hank, but Henry has big paws to fill. You'll make great parents for this cutie. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what was I saying? Uh, Scrapper Steve came. Local oh, Linda yeah. Came. Linda came, gave her, uh, or we gave her the uh, thing that she wants. She's a patron, a Patreon. I call them ass kickers. So she's an ass kicker. She happened to be local, and she won that thing. Uh, if you're on Patreon and, and you, if you're in Tier 2 or Tier 3, you have a chance to win something. One uh, build a month sort of thing or whatever. Anyways, it happened to be the the zombie head. She came over, visited the chickens, visited... She likes Millie. And then I went back in the... When she left, I went back in the shop and started making some more commissions. What did I make? A chicken? Oh, sorry, yeah. uh, make, whatever. Just made some stuff. And then... Uh, Ashley, yeah, texts me or calls me or something. And then, so I come inside and I'm like, yeah, that's a nice looking dog. Let's go get him. So, what, it was on there for like a few hours or something? Not even. It was like 35 minutes or something. Okay. So, they are a long drive away. So, like, it was already, what, like 4 o'clock or something? Mm -hmm. So, we get in the vehicle. Well, we... We message them and we say, hey, what's up with this dog? Can you hold it for us? Like, does it, you know, does it have its vaccine shots or whatever? Mm-hmm. Whatever it needs. Just see where it's at. Because it's a farm dog and oftentimes farm dogs are just, you know, you just, you get what you get. And then you have to, you know, whatever. So we wanted to know if we had Dragon to do. Dragonfly Hill sent us a super chat. Thank you. Thank you, Dragonfly Hill. Um. Anyways, so we found out the information seemed like he would be a good uh, dog to go with. If we were going to go with a dog, and why not? It felt right. Mm-hmm. Uh, or however you would feel about it. It felt right, yeah. Yeah, it was on his face, and like, that's the one. Sounds corny, <laughs> but yeah. So then we uh, we headed out, 
And uh, so we asked them, like, hey, to pay for this dog, should we get cash or do you want to do e-transfer or whatever? They, they said they would prefer cash so they wouldn't have to wait forever for the e-transfer to go through. So in Canada, we have this email banking and you can email anyone money, but to verify, it takes half an hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we don't know these people. They don't know us. COVID and all that stuff. Who knows what they're worried about? They don't know what we're worried about. Things like that. So they just said uh, they said cash would be good. So we uh, head out. I'm like, okay, we're heading away from the city that we're close by. But I was like, there's cities near the, over there. They live in the middle of nowhere, but there's got to be. So as we're driving, we're looking up. There's like, okay, there's this city. There's this city. There's this city that have the same the bank that I bank at. And uh, so we go to the, we, we drove past the first city, then we go, or town, let's call it a town. Mm -hmm. Then we get to the second town and we're like, wow, it's kind of getting late. Like it was already supper time. Yeah. It was still light out, so it must have only been around okay. six or something. Yeah. Right? So we already drove for a couple hours. So we were, whatever. Anyways, we get to this town and uh, we find the bank, which is, this town was so weirdly laid out. It had like all of the normal. Oh, yeah, beef. I'm just with the cat. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have the uh, like all of the fun stuff of town, shopping and like, you know, like the rec center and all that on one side. And then you have all the like, let's wear a suit and go to work things over <laughs> on this side of the town, and that's where the bank was. <laughs> so, anyways, we go all the way over there. I go inside the bank. Um, and uh, do the bank tellers, not the bank teller, what do you call it, bank machine stuff. The bank was closed at this point. Put my card in to try to withdraw some cash. And it says something to the effect of transaction declined, speak to your branch or something like that. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh crap, maybe I overdrew or maybe I don't have any money or I don't know what. So I checked my phone see what bank I have. I'm like, well, I have sufficient funds and it didn't say insufficient funds, so it must be something else. So I call the bank. They have like a 24 hour or whatever. Um, and she said, well, maybe, well, when I was on hold, Ashley said, maybe uh, my card didn't work, but the card did work because I opened the bank door with it and I was able to process the transaction at least. So no, the card is fine. The bank lady, she gets back to me and she's looking at it. She can see my transaction. She can see that I canceled, but she can't see why. I was like, oh, that's kind of annoying. She's like, how about this? Go to the second, like the drive through bank machine and go there. So I go there and I'm like, I'm just by myself. I don't have the car or anything. And there's like a, a couple, there's a, a couple in a, in a truck waiting for me as I'm like standing, probably looking all sketchy at the <laughs> drive through bank machine. Yeah. And these people in this truck are like just waiting for me. And I'm on the phone still, but I have my, you know, I always wear the headphones. So I'm just talking to myself, it probably looks like. But I'm just <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, okay, no, withdrawing. No, no, it's declined. So I don't know what to do. And like, I'm still standing there as it's not working. And so these people probably thought I was some sort of nut or something like that. Anyways, doesn't work. And she said, don't try again because a machine is going to eat your card. I'm going to look into this a little further. So I probably this is common, but if you fail at like, I don't know, you put in the pin wrong too many times or you, I don't know, mm -hmm. try to steal. I don't know, whatever it thought I was doing. Anyways, it'll keep your bank card and then you have to get a new one issued to you. And since we're in the middle of nowhere, couldn't really afford to do that. And uh, so I was like, okay, well, what can we do? Maybe, maybe we can do, well, Ashley, I go back into the car, the people in the truck go ahead. I wonder if they thought maybe I was putting one of those little card readers in there or something. Maybe. Anyways, go back to the vehicle. I'm on hold now as the bank lady's trying to figure it out. And then Ashley's like, well, why don't we try cash back? I'm like, dude, nowhere in this town is going to have cash back. This is stupid. I'm like, wait, let's see if there's a Walmart here. Because there seems to be Walmarts in most towns, mm -hmm. I would say. Nah, not most. In a lot of towns, right? If there's a lot of little towns around here. At least one of them has to have a Walmart. 
hopefully. And Walmarts are open past uh, banking hours, whereas in lots of these little towns, everything will close at five or six. And uh, but Walmart usually stays open um, till eleven. So I was like, okay, we should be able to figure this out if we if they have cash back. But their cash back uh, only allowed for a hundred dollar withdrawal. So I had to buy several things mm -hmm. to get a hundred bucks each time. And uh, eventually we did. But the one lady didn't want to do it. The one guy mm -hmm. ran out of cash. He's like, just go to the next teller, buy some more gum or whatever. I go to her and I'm like, I explained to her, I'm like, hey, I just need to make several withdraw or cash backs or whatever you want to call them. So like, do you have enough in your till so that I can just grab another thing and then you can bring it through again? And she's like, she's like, looks at me like I'm a freaking idiot. She's like, I have no idea what's in my till. I was like, okay. I thought you were like rob her or something. Yeah, just all out loud and stuff. <laughs> yeah. With just my whole face. Oh, I guess actually we were wearing masks, right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So we have a new we have a new mask mandate. So I guess I was wearing a mask. So I could have looked sketchy, but I mean I don't know. But you were like waiting right there with this other stuff we just bought. Yeah. Anyways, so I buy the thing, and then instead of her checking, she takes out a hundred dollar bill, but then she immediately closes it without counting anything, and then looks at me like, "What now?" And I was like. All right, so I go back and wait in line again because I didn't. There was people in line. I didn't want to be the dickhead who's just like, "Well, I just got buy one more thing, folks." So I go and wait around on the line again, and then the manager lady probably thought I was sketchy too. I don't know. Maybe she was like, "Hey, watch this dude." I don't know. Yeah. But she's like, "Hey, are you waiting for someone in line or what?" I was like, "No, I'm just gonna buy something." And also the super chat for puppy needs. Thanks, Chanel. Thank you so much. Or Chanel. 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 Yeah. So I have nothing in my hands though because I didn't know what I was going to buy. I was just like, <laughs> I was looking for like the cheapest stuff that I can, you know, that's always at the, at the counter or whatever. But anyways, I ended up going to the next till or whatever. She, she told me to go there. And that lady was so nice, mm -hmm. but she was younger. She wasn't mm -hmm. an old bag like the other lady. She was probably, I don't know, 35 or something. And she was like, she was like, oh yeah, that's no problem. She like checks her tail. She's like, yeah, I got lots. She's like, do you want hundreds? She was like super nice. And we told her, like, I even told the other lady, I'm like, hey, we're just gonna buy a dog and I don't have, you know, cash on me. So that's why I'm here. Bank machine doesn't work. I even explained to her like what our deal was. But this last lady, she was like super chill. She was like, oh yeah, cool. What kind of dog are you getting? Oh, boy or girl. Like, she was, like, all nice. Anyways, I do, like, the last four transactions with her or however many. And then uh, we leave. Drive another couple hours or however long it was to this place, which was down a bunch of gravel roads. And I remember, like, they're like, okay, you need to turn on Township Road, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But the sign was crooked. Yeah. So it said something else. Yeah. Like the, the sign, like it's, it's like an X like this, right? Yeah. Or like not an X, but like one sign, you know, you could see it say this. And then this sign here, it said something else, right? Mm -hmm. But it was like this. So the sign, <laughs> what we're supposed to be reading, I was like, I was like, no, nah, this can't be it. But their instructions, like if people come to my, our house, yeah, we can't really tell them the address because Google Maps yeah. can't find it. You have to like, you have to like explain hey go down this road then go there turn right turn left whatever right mm -hmm. they did the same thing and that what they explained said to go down this road but the sign what didn't match what they said the sign said so we're kind of like oh, i don't know took a chance anyways and then as we turned down there we could see that the sign was like got hit by something or whatever cool going down the right way make it there and then um, when we get there, they're like, hey, this is whatever, Horace. Mm -hmm. And then she he, was holding him. Yeah, she was holding him like a baby. And I cried. Yeah, you did. Because <laughs> he, so, he was so perfect. <laughs> so he, we, we, uh, she hands him to Ashley and then he's just a super chill. And I'm like, 
hmm, seems good. That sounded like an absolute retard. I was like, huh, he's so soft, but coarse at the same time. <laughs> I didn't know how to explain it. If you pet him, he has like soft fur, but it like, it's like scratchy at the same time, which doesn't make any sense. Well, I think because golden retrievers have that longer, smoother hair and shepherds have that coarser hair. They're leaving. We might have to switch up here. Oh, here, so I need to go outside. Oh no. He just wants to do some yoga. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll turn you guys around so you can still see him and then we'll just talk from behind the camera. How about that? Just chilling. <clears throat> What's up, bud? Were the farmers also dog breeders? They were not. I don't think. No, I don't think so. They just they just they just had a litter because the because they only had the one female dog that we saw there, but they had a picture of the of the the dad dog, or at least what they thought was the dad dog, uh, on the ad. But he wasn't there. But there was other animals there, so he could have been somewhere else. So I'm not sure. But he was. I don't think they were breeders, because then they would have probably had. Yeah, no, they weren't. They would have had more dogs. I yeah. think. And, like, that dog, like, I don't know why they would breed the mama dog. She was, like, a mutt. Yeah. Right? Like, it wasn't, so, like, they were, like, purebreds. So yeah. yeah. So, he is not part husky as far as we know. But, I mean, he could be. Look at those toe beans. <laughs> uh, uh, how is house training going? It's how, really good. House training is... Probably the easiest of the training, I would say, right? Yeah, the first night, he, I took him out like every two hours to the bathroom. Yeah. So keep in mind, guys, he was a barn dog. Yeah, he so was outside. He was not an indoor dog. He was a barn dog. And so he didn't know where to go to the bathroom. So he took a dump in the basement, like, but he hit it, kind of. Like, probably not on purpose, but like, he like pooped right up against the, yeah. the wall where there's... Not against the wall. Like, not know, not the wall, but a wall corner. a wall of stuff, yeah, in a corner. But now he knows to go outside at least most of the time. Sometimes he'll probably, or every once in a while, he'll probably still have an accident until he like gets it, gets it. But he'll get it soon. He seems to be a quick learner with like sit and. He hasn't had an accident since like Saturday. Hasn't had an accident since Saturday. So yeah. like, what day is it today? Thursday. Thursday. So four, five, six days. Yeah. Six days of no accidents. So that's good. Um, yeah. Oh, Rebecca doesn't know that Hank passed away. So we made a, I don't even know, we probably didn't vlog about it, so that's probably why people just, missed it. I did do a, uh, I did that painting right there that you can see on the left. And that was like basically our announcement that he passed away. Um, so if you don't watch the paint videos and you only watch the vlogs, perhaps you missed it. Or like, I think we mentioned it in lives as well. Maybe some other, anyways, the point is she missed it. So if anyone here uh, missed it, yeah, that's why Hank is not around and that's uh, why we got Henry. Although maybe we would have gone to Henry anyways, who knows? Someone asked if he's always so chill, no. He's not always so chill, but he's uh, he's been very active today. So he's tired. Yeah. Uh, he had like, uh, we were trying to do some stuff more with the chickens, see how you would uh, deal with them uh, as they're like, you know, dust bathing and stuff like that. We to the park when the kids got out of school so that he could see all the kids walking by and bikes and scooters and all that. Yeah, so trying to get him used to, so with Hank, so uh, for those who know Hank, he was like, he was a nice dog, but he was very mean to people he didn't know, or not like mean to them, but like, you know, guarded, right? He would bark at them or he'd growl at them. He wouldn't trust hardly anyone, uh, especially men with beards and like uh, like fat people. He would get very aggressive, like not aggressive, what do you call it? Like uh, guarded, I guess. Like he never bit no one and he never like went after anyone, but like if they would try to pet him without asking or something like that, yeah. you know, they, he would just be like, you know how dogs are, right? And it was scary to people, which wasn't scary to us because we obviously knew him and we knew, we knew, well, at least we, 
I don't even know how to explain it. For those who have dogs will know what I'm talking about. Did he like Gramps? Yeah, he didn't mind Gramps. He was uh, unsure of him at first, but as time went on, he's just like, oh, that's just Roger. That's cool. Um, uh, what was I saying? Sorry, my ADD, we were guys. We're socializing. We're socializing. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so to avoid him being so apprehensive and meeting people or when people come by or whatever, we uh, want him to get used to as many people as possible. When it came to Hank, he had other underlying issues when uh, it came to, like, trust issues because he was abused and stuff. And, you know, he was a, a, a rescue, I guess you could say, but not by us. He... Uh, was rescued by these other folks and uh and we just adopted him from them and uh so he was abused and then neglected from from his little puppy life i guess we got him at about almost seven months old i guess he was six months old going to the seven months old so we want to do as much socialization early on uh so that you know because like hank he's only he's only six months old and he's already showing aggression to people who he doesn't know, right? And we didn't want that to happen with, with Henry. And we couldn't really do anything about it. With with Hank, we we brought him to, like, training and stuff. Like, it was, like, uh, not one-on-one. -on -one. What do you call it? Like, a group training, but, like... Uh, yeah, like, classes. Like, but what do you call it? Like, when one person trains them at the class, and then uh, and then you both train them at home or whatever. I forget what they called it. Or maybe they didn't call it that. Maybe they just wanted only one person to do it. Whatever it is. We would go to the, like, once a week for a few months. A month. Like, almost a year. Almost, almost a year? Yeah. yeah. So we did, like, I don't know what kind of training you guys have, but this was, like, a positive reinforcement training that we did. So it was, like, uh, uh, like step one, step two, step three. And then there was, like, agility. And then, and then after that... We did, uh, we went back because he was, we had cats and we didn't want him to go after the cat. So we took him back for like uh, that kind of training, whatever, to get rid of his, I don't know, whatever. But he just had a high prey drive and he just, he just wasn't going to be trained out of going after cats. So we would just have to manage it on our own uh, the best we could. So that's why uh, um, with Henry... We wanted it to be important that, uh, or we thought it important that he get along with cats. And one of the pictures in the ad, he was chilling with a cat. And then when we, yeah, a little kitten. And then uh, and there was, you know, when we got there, we're like, oh, this should be chill. Cats everywhere, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, Martha Trinke asked if he sleeps through the night. He doesn't because he usually has to get up to go to the bathroom. But he wakes me up to go to the bathroom, which is really nice. Yeah. So, when he gets a little stronger bladder, probably he'll be fine. Uh, but Shadow needs to go out as well. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> oh, Henry. Oh, it's a good stretch. <laughs> I wish I had a stronger bladder. <laughs> um, yeah, so we had some, some questions come up or some suggestions so uh some people suggested like s since he's young it's a good time to train him to not jump on people which um yes that's obvious but uh so we do appreciate your suggestions but there is a there's there is a a plan a plan i don't know what you would call it well thanks uh martha um there is a planned way. Planned is stupid. We know not to let him jump on people unless he's invited to. Because we also taught Hank like all these same things, right? We and we learned how to do it. At least this method, we learned how to do it. Um, you know, with through positive reinforcement and stuff. And uh, uh, so, like, a dog should only jump on you if it's invited to jump on you. Which is not even to jump on you, just to. If you wanted to like say up, say up, yeah, whatever, right? And with Henry, he doesn't know what anything means yet. I mean, he knows stuff now, but yeah. like at the time, he learned sit so quickly. Yeah, he knew sit. He knows down. He knows uh, do backflip. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know backflips. People are asking how big 
big he's going to be. Um, we're not really sure. We're not really sure. We yeah. wanted a dog that had big paws. Yeah. So that we or like a puppy that had big paws so that so usually that means he's going to grow up to be a big dog. Like Hank had massive paws and he was pretty big. He was 110 pounds. Henry might not be that big, but Yeah, but he'll be like a It'd be nice. A large size dog. Yeah, he should be at least hopefully a large dog. Yeah. Probably but he'll like be 80 a, to 100 pounds, I think. Yeah, it'd be nice if he was 100 pounds. Hank was a uh, uh, Malamute, cr like crossed with Malamutes, right? Malamutes mm -hmm. are huge, so. Yeah. Um, but he's only crossed with a sh like Shepherd and Golden Retriever, as far as we know. And those are both just larger, medium sized dogs, so yeah. not huge, but who knows? Uh, uh, his mom wasn't super big. She was like Duke's size. Right, yeah. yeah. Um. Anyways, yeah, we're going to train him, or we're going to teach him that jumping up is not good unless he is invited to jump up, which not very many people would do that. But like I did it with Hank, but we would, uh, you know, dance with him. You know, he'd jump up and then we'd grab his paws and then we'd do a stupid dance. Uh, or like if we wanted him to jump up, he would like, like jump up, like leave the ground, jump up and like grab something that was in our hand or, you know, something like that. He wouldn't really necessarily jump on you unless you like patted your chest or something like that. Um, but then again, he knew that he was invited to do that and he never jumped on people. At least I don't remember him jumping on it once he learned not to. Right. And you just do that through ignoring him when he does, you know, or, or like, uh, you know, keywords or whatever, um, which we try not to say unless we want him to listen to whatever those words are, stuff like that. Um, someone asked if he's met Duke yet. Yes. He's met Duke. Several times. And first he was like, what the heck is this dog? He's kind of nervous of him. Yeah. Least. And now he's chill with him. Today they were wrestling. Yeah. Uh, Henry is a mix of very smart breeds. He must be a smart boy. Well, perhaps, yeah. Uh, he's, uh, it's a, he's still young, so still lots that we can teach him. I mean, there's a saying that you can't teach old dogs new tricks, which is not true. You absolutely can, but it's definitely easier to tr train a, a young dog because they don't have any bad behaviors that are mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, accept it or whatever. Like lots of times it's little dogs that have bad behavior because they don't hurt you. So people don't mind if they jump up and they don't mind if they bark and stuff. What were you going to say? I was going to say one of Hank's kind of bad habits was begging for food. But we've noticed since Hank never learned that, he doesn't do it at all. Right. Yeah. So when yeah. people would give Henry stuff that, that, uh, or yeah, sorry, Hank would give Hank stuff that he didn't, you know, earn. Then he just learned that, oh, maybe if I just look cute or like do these weird, not whimpers, but whatever those noises are, then he knew that he could do something. Or if he did a trick. He, like, would, he would stand there and do a trick when we didn't even ask him to. Yeah, he would do tricks. Uh, you know, he would like lift his paw. Uh, you know, like when you get a horse to, I don't know what it's called, but a horse will do like that that leg thing, that front leg thing. Yeah, Hank would do that. He learned how to do that at uh, agility classes or whatever. Yeah. And so he would, <laughs> he would do that when, uh, when uh, you would ignore him and then he would do like this paw thing. And then he, <laughs> he would be like, all right, cool. Now let's, let's have some steak or whatever it was, right? And that's, that's unfortunate, but we didn't know like how important it was to not let we should have let people know, like, hey, don't feed the dog. He's not hungry. He just likes the food. Make him do something for it, but do it away from the table or whatever, you know, away from our eating space or whatever. Uh, it wasn't like a huge deal to us. It's just kind of annoying, but it's not something, at least in our experience, where it, it turned into some sort of like aggression or anything like that. He wouldn't, he wouldn't be aggressive to get food. He would just be like, hey... Can I have some of that? It smells good. Like... Does he like belly rubs? He loves belly rubs. He, he does. Excuse me. But 
oh. I was going to say, he might not react to it because he's sleeping, but he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, let me let me turn the camera around so you guys can see the the his face. Oh, thanks, Delphina. Delphina said just for being cute, Henry. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, guys. It's very kind of you. Oh, oh sorry, bud. I didn't mean to disturb you. <laughs> Look at that ear. <laughs> uh, M Momo Hut. No, mom of huskies says you can also get a crate for him and feed him in the crate so he associates it with food and not bag at the table. Yeah, absolutely. We, we're we not too worried about crate training because uh, we do have, uh, I, we have actually a bunch of those crates. Yeah. Um, uh, we're not too worried about that. If, if it was an issue, perhaps we would do that. I know a lot of people do that, but uh, um, one, th so... I mean, I could be wrong on this, but we also want him to be like a bit of a guard dog, right? Because we live out in the country. There's people who get stolen, stolen from? Robbed. People get robbed all the time. And uh, <clears throat> we don't, I mean, maybe you're saying crate for just his food and not necessarily when you're not home or whatever. I know that crate training is good so that their anxieties are subsided. So they have less to worry about and and, and whatever else, right? But for us, we want him to be free from a crate just for, uh, you know, safety reasons for, you know, protection of our of our home and whatnot. Um, I don't see anything wrong with crate training if that's what you want to do. But that's just not something that we necessarily want to do. Um, what we would do for his food training, and which is what we were doing with Hank um, for a while, is just feed him after and feed him by hand. So he would have to earn everything uh, that he ate. And then at the end, we would give him the rest of his food in his bowl. Right, right. And then we like to ask him to do things. Like yeah. And lay down and wait. Yeah. Or go fetch a ball or yeah. whatever. And then we would leave his food bowl empty. And then when it was time to eat, we would give him his food or whatever, something like that, you know? Uh, what was I, what was I saying before? Um, also, he's pretty chill. I don't even know if he has any anxieties. It doesn't seem as though he does. He doesn't, like, he follows me around from room to room, and if I, if he doesn't know where I am, he seems to get a little anxious. Oh, does he? Okay. Yeah. Which, I don't know, but when you're home, he's okay, right? Mm. Has Henry been exposed to a thunderstorm? Yes, last night. Or last night or the night before? Last night. We had hail. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool, actually. There was hail. Uh, he didn't even care at all. <laughs> he wasn't scared even one bit. So, lightning and thunder. He's just like, I guess those are some noises that happen sometimes. Yeah. Uh, he didn't care about... We went to a car show by accident last night. Yeah. Uh, my neighbor, Rob, has a loud car. Um... Uh, everyone there basically had a loud car and like he was walking around and then when someone would start their engines right it'd just be like this big rumbling just i don't know if you guys heard a uh, someone who like you know has a race car type vehicle they're quite loud when you start them up on a cold start kind of sound awesome in my opinion but he didn't even flinch no. he didn't even move out of the way when that one purple truck was mm -hmm. there he didn't even care at all and so loud noises don't seem to be an issue for him uh, flashing lights, lightning, whatever, doesn't seem to be an issue. Being in the dark doesn't seem to be an issue. So far, he seems to be pretty well-rounded in his uh, securities, I would say. In the family on the farm, they had lots of children, maybe six. I would say about six children. Yeah, I think they had so six kids. used to kids and loud, like, kid noises. Oh, that's probably why. Probably, yeah. like, instantly. Kids playing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that could be. Uh, he was scared to come into the house at first. Yeah. But that's probably because he was an outside dog and he just didn't know what inside looked like. Yeah. Or was. He's just used to outside grass and fences mm -hmm. and the barn. How does he do in the car? He just sleeps in the car. Yeah. 
How's he with the chickens? Mostly good, I would say. I would say like 99% there, maybe 98% there. Mm -hmm. Has some issues with uh, um, when the, the fluffier chickens come by him because he just wants, to, he seems to want to play with them. No aggression, as far as we can tell, uh, but we've been watching him, so I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying that he has no aggression. But if we've had our backs turned and he's shown aggression, we've, we just missed it. Um, but we want to be careful with that because we don't want to have to worry about that. We have coyotes and foxes and, you know, stuff like that. The occasional bobcat and stuff. I don't know if he would be able to handle himself with a bobcat. But, uh, you know, we want him to be able to protect the chickens and know that that's his, uh, maybe not necessarily his job, but like, you know, that's something that he should do rather than go after them. So again, so today we spent a lot of time outside with the chickens out. He seemed to be good most of the time. Of course, he wants to play. So, you know, you just try to redirect him and then, you know, maybe give him a stick or something, give him a tug toy or something like that. And then he, he just loses interest in the chickens because he has something else to play with. Whereas like, say with Hank, when we had him, there was no, like, unless you caught it instantly, because you can tell, like, when the dog's ears perk up, uh, you know, they get a little stiff, you know, you can kind of just learn their body language. You can tell, like, he's targeting, and you had to be, like, super quick with being like, hey, leave it, and then, you know, he would listen to you. But if he was already in the zone, mm -hmm. he was like, pew, and then you, <laughs> you'd be like, oh, shit. <laughs> and then, you know, but he, you know, you couldn't, he didn't care once he had once he wanted to go kill something or whatever he would just try to go do it uh which is unfortunate but he's a dog and dogs used to be wolves and wolves kill things so someone asked if he has a favorite toy does he have a favorite toy i don't know does he yeah, I, I guess I, he kind of like rotating the toys that he has so he has the rope and the cat toy right now but his favorite one is that liberty ball oh yeah did someone send us that Oh, no, we got it for Hank, actually, um, many, many years ago. Okay, yeah, there's a Statue of Liberty crown ball. It's like one of those pokey, bouncy balls, you know? I don't know what they're called. Like rubber. Yeah, like a rubber, but, like, it's, like, this big, yeah. right? And it's inside of, like, a, a Statue of Liberty jacket. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Uh, yeah, I forgot he liked And he also likes that porcupine. Yeah. He took all the fluff out of it. Oh, so that's probably in the garbage now. No, I still have it. It's in the box. Look at those long legs, guys. <laughs> um, someone, oh, Matt says, does he bark? Just Some, sometimes, playing. but not really. Yeah, just when he's playing. He hasn't barked at anyone. He met Clint today yeah. and di didn't care. Which So that's one thing. We wanted to introduce him to people with beards. So in the vlog, you saw Jarrett and Brittany come over. Uh... Uh, Jarrett has a beard, so like you know that was perfect. They have a dog, so Willow is over, and uh, uh, Clint has a beard, so that's two people with a beard. At the car show, there's some people with beards. Lots of different people. Yeah. Oh yeah, motorcycles didn't care about the motorcycles, which yeah. were quite loud. Uh, yeah, and I don't think he cares about like so Hank, like I said. With like large people, he was just like, "What the heck is going on here? This person it means something," and he would, he would be scared of them. But you know, his scaredness wasn't like you know whimpering and stuff. It was like aggression, of like defensive aggression or whatever. I don't even know if that's the thing, but you know, you could just tell. Like if there was a big lady coming, especially, we'd be like, "Okay, let's walk over here, maybe," or you know, do over this. With Henry, if that starts happening, we'll try to correct that right away with. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know how exactly we do that. Go to the gym, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Figure it out anyway. Uh, getting dogs used to people with beards is a good thing. Are you gonna be coming over, Jim? NSRC <laughs> uh, said he's growing as they're watching. <laughs> yeah, look, look at these legs; they're so long. <laughs> um, have you heard from Dakota? Uh, no, I haven't heard from Dakota. No, no one. Well, I have heard from Ken and Mike, but uh, that's because they needed some supplies that I went and got for them. Uh, well, Jim, you're welcome to come over whenever you have the time. 
Who named him? So Henry was like a name that we had for a long time. Another, it was actually one of the names that we thought about naming Hank, but Hank suited Hank better. Yeah. So Henry just was a name that we had. Like, but there's also other names. Like I was also thinking like, oh, we could name him like Pete or like. Uh, so Pete was one of the names that there was another dog that we saw, not one that we were going to get. I was like, oh, that looks like a Pete. So that's just been a name that's been in my head. But then there's been other dogs where I'm like, oh, that's a Brian or that's yeah. a Harold, you know? There's just, I don't know, sometimes dogs just look like they should have a name and then you just attach it to it. And he looked like a Henry to us. So I was like, how about Henry? That's a name that we were going to use before anyway. So let's go with Henry. And, you know, Hank is the nickname for Henry. Yeah, that's something we didn't know. That was unintentional. The cats are outside. Someone was asking where the cats are. Oh, yeah, the cats are outside because... Uh, as we're talking to you, if if there's like some sort of uh, issue with him trying to chase him off, we didn't want to disrupt the whole feed with uh, trying to calm him down. I mean, so far it's been quite easy to do, but you never know. They were sleeping together, like on the bed. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's just when he wants to play. It when seems he's to super ram- rambunctious, then they're really scared of him. Yeah. And but we want to make sure that like it's not going to turn into like a a prey drive thing. So we want we stop it as f- soon as we can, just so that he's not like thinking that it's acceptable. And then we try to redirect him to like playing with something else. If if we thought it was an aggression thing, then we would. I don't know know what we would do. We do some. We would. I don't know. We would try to find a remedy for it. Anyways. Uh, Henry is a great name for him, not to mention it's related to Hank. Everything about this seems perfect. How long have we had him? We've had him for... Six days. Six days. Five days. Six days. Yeah. Six days, yeah. If I, the cat will have Henry trained in a couple of weeks. Well, <laughs> he did get scratched on his nose. Yeah. And he didn't even care. He's just like, oh, this is great. Uh, yeah. He backed off a little bit. To be like, like probably like, oh, that hurt. He runs up to them like full speed and then he'll play bow. Yeah. So he really wants to play. But then they look at him like, whoa, what is this thing? Yeah. So, yeah. So if you guys aren't aware, like when dog, like you can, again, like body language is a lot, uh, like helps you learn a lot about them. So like oftentimes, like if you're at the dog park or something, you'll see people freak out when a big dog comes to their little dog because it looks like it's going to attack it because maybe it's growling or maybe it's baring its, well, baring its teeth would probably be bad. <laughs> but like, you know, maybe it's doing something that sounds aggressive or looks aggressive, but really it's not. And you can tell like, you know, where its tail is, where its ears are, if its butt is in the air, if it's play bowing, if it's wiggly. Yeah, all those things matter. And then what kind of makes these things This is my non-expert opinion, by the way, guys. Don't take this as gospel. But these are just things that we learned while we were at training to be able... Because they would have all the dogs play together when we got there. Some people would, like, immediately try to break it up. And then the trainer would be like... She'd be like, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. They're just playing. Just... They're just playing. And he's like... He's like, you know how sometimes people like to go boxing? Well, sometimes dogs like to... Get a little nippy doesn't mean that they're fighting, sort of thing. All right, so you do different things for fun as a person. Dogs do different things for fun as dogs. So we would learn about like those different behaviors or whatever. And uh, when you go to a dog park, you know, not everyone brings their dog to training. They kind of just do their own, you know, like recall training and that's about it. Or maybe more or maybe less, whatever. Everyone's different. And not everyone knows about these things, right? And then so they would just start pulling on leashes and stuff and like breaking their own hands, trying to like keep their big dogs yeah. away and, you know, have like, I don't know, just being dumb, but like in an ignorant way, not in a way that they're, you know, they just don't know. And like, we don't know everything either. So, you know, it's just, we just learn what we learn. Anyways, uh, um, what was I, what, where did, where was I going with this? <laughs> oh, with the, with the cats. So we can tell that he's, he's playing, playing based <laughs> off of 
you know, those things that we learned, you know, with his play bowing, being all wiggly, being uh, uh, like, uh, you know, like not being, how, how do you say that? Like, he's not all stiff and he's not stopping at the cat and like snarling or anything like that. Um, the big time trainers use German to control dogs. To control dogs or to train dogs? I don't, I don't know what that, I guess, to, well, people use German because not very many people speak German here. So you can't, a dog will listen to its command. Like a dog will listen to a command from anyone a lot of the time. But so for example, police dogs, police dogs are trained in German because not very many people speak German. So when a person, you know, if a dog is sick on them and they're like, stop, leave it, ah, no, don't. It's not gonna listen because it doesn't know what those mean. It just knows what, whatever those words are in German are, right? So, oh, look at him dreaming. <laughs> so that's, that's what we know about learning in German, but I don't speak any German, so we're gonna teach them in English. And if other people know those things, of course, a dog will will ignore commands if it's you know protecting itself or. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was trained in German and hand signals. Yeah, Hank was trained in with hand signals and uh, in English. Why would we wake him? He's just sleeping. I'm gonna pop his ear back. <laughs> oh, some people think he's having a nightmare. I don't think so. French, I don't speak any French either, but a lot of people here speak French, so. Flip his ear back. Oh, that doesn't really work. Did it go back? Uh, no, I, well, I flipped back. Flip his ear back, seriously, it is a weird feeling. I don't think he cares. <laughs> his ear's like this every time he sleeps. I don't think he cares. Uh, uh, hey, thanks, Liam. Liam says, good to catch one of your streams finally. Love your welding sculptures. And he's a leather crafter in Ontario. Fantastic. That's cool. Native words. I don't know any native words either. If we felt like it, we could just, we could just, tr like, uh, so he'll associate words with commands, like hand signal commands. So like, you know, like depending on who you are, a lot of them are kind of universal, but like if you put your hand up, so a lot of times that will mean down, ironically. <laughs> and if you like say make a fist, maybe that could mean sit. Uh, if you, you know, do, I don't know, whatever, whatever they are. Uh, um, what was I saying? With the, uh, sorry, I read a comment here. Sorry, I had dogs all my life and had several dogs. I had weird dreams with things out of order. They told you what their dreams were? Like, I don't know how I'm supposed to put his ear down. I mean, lots of dogs have their ears up like this just naturally. <laughs> it's not, it's not looking bad. <laughs> um, oh yeah, so if we felt like we needed to, we could, uh, we could retrain him in a, just with associate through association in a different language, but there's no need to. It is kind of cool though. Like we met, well, we didn't meet them, but in the uh, when we were on the island one time, for instead of telling his dogs to come, this guy said hustle. Oh yeah. And then so like yeah. hustle is not a commonly used no. word when you talk to dogs, but there's hundreds of people with dogs. And when people are like, you know, whatever their name is, and they say come, they, like, you could have several dogs come to you, you know, yeah. especially if they're, like, super friendly and they'd like everyone. Yeah. But this guy, he was just like, he was like, Barry, hustle. 
<laughs> oh, sorry, bud. <laughs> and then the, his dog would just come booking it because he, he was like kind of far away and it was in the trees and then he popped out. I thought that was super cool. Yeah. You can train to any hand signal or Yeah, absolutely. I was just saying, for example, those are some universal ones. A lot of people use those words. I had a friend actually, when we first got Hank, he's like, you know how you get him to sit? And then he just pops up his hand and I was like, he doesn't know what that means. So that's not going to work. <laughs> and that was before we were, t we took him to training. I thought that was hilarious because he thought like every dog just knew that that meant sit, but he's obviously knows other people who have had that type of training where that hand signal does mean sit for those dogs. But he thought like every dog just knew that, which is funny because like how, like, like that's like a universal dog. Signal. Yeah. We had a cat says Meredith that would obey, go to the utility room and get out of the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my son and his girlfriend has a licensed service dog and he speaks with his eyes and barks once or twice if he needs your attention. Now those dogs are very well disciplined. Those dogs and like police dogs, like, so the lady that we went, that we took our dog training for, she also does, um, police dog training and well, she didn't do it anymore when we went to her, but she used to, she used to. and, uh, now she just did civilian dogs, but she like explained, like, you know, she said, she's like, most people think that police dogs are just German shepherds. And she's like, that's not true. She's like, any dog can be a police dog. It just depends on what their job is or whatever. Right. So you could have like drug sniffing dogs and you could have, you know, dogs that were to chase people. Those are typically, um, bigger dogs, obviously like German shepherds and, you know, stuff like that. And so she would explain like, so some dogs, you can just train them to, so you can handle them good. And he's like, but then there's some dogs that have to go through like a very rigorous type program where they would be trained like as a normal dog. Then you'd weed out the ones that weren't super good at listening or whatever. Then they would go into another type of training or whatever. And then out of like, say, I don't remember what the statistics were, but let's say just for example, out of a hundred dogs, maybe three or four of them would actually make it uh, where their job would be in law enforcement or whatever. Oh, oh hi. turn it over again. Hello. Oh, biggest yawn. Are you awake? Oh, Charlie's saying that he would. They would stop whimpering when he when he fixed his ear. Oh, well, how did you keep it down, or it just did stay down? Look at that tongue. Because <laughs> if he was having a bad dream, I don't want him to have bad dreams, and it it'd be like because his ears flopped up. But that seems kind of weird to me, but. Oh, his ears staying good now. <laughs> I also use beep beep if I want them to get out of my way. The cats or the dog? My cats don't obey any commands. Our cats just know what off means. <laughs> Do puppies sleep most of the day? He doesn't really. Uh, I'd say more so in the evening. There are some amazingly trained animals. Oh, absolutely. And the more time you spend with them, of course, the more, the, the better trained they will become. Like with Hank, he listened to us pretty well, but he didn't listen to many other people unless he knew him. Like he'd listen to like my in-laws, like Ashley's parents and brother. Uh, but I don't know. Did he get something? Oh, he has a piece of fluff. Is that a fuzz in your mouth? That's a piece of the floor. What are you doing? Don't eat that. Uh, search and rescue dogs are awesome. Yeah, so I don't know if our trainer lady did any of those kind of, kind of dogs, but yeah, I agree. Those are cool. Just gonna get a little sip of water.
<laughs> We'd love to see how he mingles with the other animals in a near future video. Yeah, for sure. What do you figure, Henry? Are you about done here or what? Uh, Liam says, growing up, each of our dogs had unique whistles to summon them, but having uniform, consistent training with everyone involved with the animal is absolutely key. Yeah, that's totally true. If you, especially like, well, when we were training Hank, like, cause we share, we, we rented a, the suite from our in-laws and they didn't go to the training with us. So we'd have to explain to them cause they didn't learn from the trainer. So we had a lot of inconsistencies, which didn't help, but like it wasn't intentional, right? It's not like they were like, no, nah, we've had dogs before. We'll train them this way, which a lot of people have that attitude, right? But you can't have like, there's more than one right way to train a dog, but you can't do more than one at the same time. <laughs> Get hammer, bring screwdriver. That is good carpenter dog training. Uh, the town near me had a chihuahua as a police dog. Her name was Midge, and she was trained to sniff out drugs. Oh, I'll grab his rope. He doesn't chew on the other stuff. So in our airport, there's these uh, little dogs. I don't know what kind of dogs they are, but they uh, are always walking around with uh, the RCMP or whatever, sniffing people's bags. Oh, thanks, Teresa. Here's something for the shots, she said. Oh, thanks. Does he chew on shoes? Yes, he does. Yeah, try so... Try to redirect him to other things. Yeah, so basically. when he chews on shoes, yeah, we just basically, uh, like, go grab a toy quickly, take away the shoe, and then give him the other thing, and then he won't. Oh, cool. Charlie's uh, father had a customer who trained dogs and uh, she would train five dogs at a time. Oh, my goodness. And then she would separate them to train them for specific tasks. Wow. Does he chew on your shoes while you're wearing them? No. <laughs> no. He doesn't seem to chew on us unless we're like kind of like smushing him and stuff right then, <laughs> like just playing with him you know what i mean like when you just like you're just like oh look at you you know he might go over your yeah but like that would be you know in, uh what would you say like that's like allowed because we're playing with him but if he just goes after you when you're not playing you know he'll learn the difference just like hank Hank, like, I could pile drive him if I wanted to. I mean, I never did, but, like, you know, I could, like, I could grab him and I could, like, you know, wrestle him and he was fine. But he never would do that unless he knew that we were playing. So, which, you know, you did initiate it. He was never allowed to initiate it himself, you know. If he did, you just ignore him. He's a big dog, so if he did that to the wrong person, you never want, you don't want that to happen, right? Especially if the person's scared of him. Because then they could freak out and then, you know something bad could happen. So you just got to be sure that, you know, he's not going to do that. But again, we had a, like a caution tag on him and stuff. So people wouldn't come up to him and pet him by himself because he had anxieties when it came to, to certain people. So we didn't want people to be like, Oh, there's a cool dog. Let's go pet him and then get bit. He never did bite anyone, but it could have happened, you know, cause he's a dog and dogs have teeth and teeth are for biting. So, you know, <laughs> she was a weird person very nice and explained she trained them to get along in a pack so when they were in public they would not have a problem with other dogs in public the isolation was the isolation was to focus that's <laughs> she was weird but she was a good trainer i guess when i was a little like eight or so i wrestled our dog he got mad and tried to bite me so i bit him lol he never tried that again i had a massive mouse full of his hair well hank never tried to bite me Never tried to bite anyone, I don't think. Um, when it came to wrestling, he knew that we were playing because, you know, you give him breaks. You don't, like, keep pushing him and pushing him and pushing him, you know? And then, you know, you don't wrestle 
without maybe a toy you know yeah say you have like a tug toy like this and you you might you might like push them over or whatever and then grab the toy you know and then push them over again and then you might grab him around his belly and like pull him and you know you just you, you're not the goal is not to hurt him the goal is just to make a make a fun game out of it but if you have a toy in it then he knows that it's this but you don't want him to become like possessive or something like that either so then you have to you know take the toy away after and put it up so he knows that it's not his it's it's ours or whatever you know again i'm not explaining it super well so don't take anything i'm saying as as gospel i'm just that's what we did and he never had a problem with us uh playing with him rough of course playing with him rough maybe added to his maybe i don't know some of his downfall with some of his attitudes towards other things i'm not sure but these are things that we talk to our trainer about as well and you know every dog is individual just like every person is individual so some things could be true with hank that wouldn't have been true normally you know different things like that anyways guys i think i think you guys Got a good look at him. <laughs> what do you hear? What do you hear, bud? Something oh, is that Shadow? Maybe yeah, I was just gonna say he probably wants to go out. So we'll we'll let you guys go. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed seeing him. I guess he was just sleeping that whole time. But you know, uh, we make our dog treats by slicing chicken breast and putting thin slices on the dehydrator for seven to eight hours. For our chick chicken treats, for our dog treats, we kind of do. We don't dehydrate it, but we just for his high value treats for training and stuff, we know we use chicken nuggets, hot dogs, bacon, uh, these other random treats that like store bought treats that smell like absolute ass, but dogs really love them. Uh, liver something or other. Um, freeze dried liver. Really oh, like they're so disgusting. Yeah, freeze dried liver. Are like those the ones that? Or I don't know. It, they're like they're puffy. Whatever the ones are that stink. Yeah, I think it's freeze dried. I can't remember. Oh, I hate them. Uh, we haven't used those with Henry yet, but like those are what we used with Hank, and he loved them. But Hank really loved any food, basically. So, I don't. We don't know if Henry's in love with food or not. Is liver good for his coat? I don't know. I mean, I imagine if it's good for other coats, like I egg, I guess is good for their coats too. And Hank liked eggs. He would like. When we would give him an egg, he, <laughs> he would gently grab the egg, like with his jaws, he would just gently grab it, and then he would bring it to like the sidewalk or whatever, and then he'd drop it until it cracked, and then he would lick it up. Um, but anyways, guys, thank you so much. Thank you for the super chats. Thanks for watching. If you missed the vlogs, make sure you go check out the vlogs where you can see more of him. Um, as time goes on, we'll keep you guys updated with how he's doing with the cats, progress and leaving them alone versus playing. Uh, you guys will be able to see him kind of grow up. He's probably already grown a bit, I would say, in the last few days. Because, I don't know, he seems quite long. I think yeah. he was, like, just a little bit bigger than Chena. Uh, Chena's not here right now, so we can't really compare, but... Yeah, I think he has grown. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways, guys. Thank you so... Oh, look at him. Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys.